Hi, I'm Dr. Kenneth J. I am co-founder of the Row Forge, and I'm also the creator of the Row Forge programs and the Power Profile that's in the the Row Forge app. I'm an avid rower. I love strength training. I love cardiovascular training. My favorite muscle of uh, of the body is the heart. It is the the most important muscle in my opinion because nothing else in the body works if your heart does not work. So even if you're a strict training junkie, you still need to take care of the heart. And if you're really into strength training and heavy lifting, it actually becomes increasingly important as much, uh, the more you do the strength training. That has something to do with what cardiovascular training does to your heart compared to what strict training does to your heart. All right, uh, but for this video though, <clears throat> This video, though, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the damper setting on the rowing machine. This is very, this video is going to have very little to do with the actual Rowforge app, um, but we have to address this issue because most people uh, have a completely wrong damper setting on the rowing machine on the Concept Two rowers we're talking about here. Um, the damper setting is this one out here, um, and it actually when you move it up and down it actually either opens uh, or closes how, uh, for how much air can get into the chamber here which is the flywheel that spins every time you pull on the handle um, and most people make the mistake and what you'll probably see if you go out into pretty much any gym who has a concept to rower and you look at the damper setting and it will be all the way up here uh, at the very top um, and that's because most people think of it uh, think of it as a resistance setting, which is in some cases is it's true, but it doesn't work like like weight resistant does. It, this is wind resistance on a flywheel. The, pretty much no one rows with a damper setting all the way up here, and uh, rowers who who does this for a living, uh, they definitely don't train on a Concept Two rower with the damper setting uh, all the way up here. Heavyweight rowers, they will probably set it at around a six or a seven, and lightweight rowers, depending on what they're accustomed to, probably a three or a four. Um, heavyweight women, they will probably be at around a three. So the thing is, is that <clears throat> while most people go all the way up here. Um, because they f feel like they need to feel the resistance, but what usually also happens with these people is that they fatigue completely within a minute or two. And that's because if it's all the way up here, the more open it is, the more air is allowed into the chamber. The more air that's allowed into the chamber, the faster the flywheel will slow down when it's spinning, because there's more air resistance, and the more force it takes to actually accelerate it. And what makes people fatigue when there's too much air going in is because it, it, the flywheel for each stroke, it'll slow down really fast and then people have to accelerate it again. And in order to accelerate something, it's harder to accelerate something and it takes more energy to accelerate something than it takes to keep a constant speed. And you'll know that from, your, uh, from driving your car. Um, if you have like a, a, a way to look at how, how much fuel or if you have an electric car, you'll see as well in the display that when you put push uh, the pedal to the metal and floor it, you'll see that your either your gas consumption or your uh, your your kilowatts energy consumption in your electric car is being uh, used more rapidly when you accelerate. And then when you find a constant speed, it stabilizes. The same thing with this is that if the flywheel slows down faster, then you can actually come back to a new starting position on the rowing machine and get ready for the next stroke, then you have to accelerate it again. And that's why people fatigue so rapidly on this, because they are not fast enough and, uh, and, and quick enough to catch the next stroke before the flywheel has slowed almost completely down when the setting is all the way up here, because there's so much air going into it. And that's a huge mistake. That's why that's why they fatigue and they don't get the benefit from rowing because they fatigue after a couple a couple of minutes. And quite frankly, the most people I see using the rowing machine at, at local gyms basically use it as a warm up because they can feel quite fatigued in a, in a matter of minutes because this is done wrong. The right way to do it is to find out where you can keep a comfortable pace without the flywheel use, uh, losing too much speed between each stroke. Because remember, as you pull on the, uh, pull on the handle and do a stroke, 
you will probably average somewhere between 24, 25, maybe 30 strokes per minute, right? And that means that on average, there's at least uh, for one second you're pulling, the next second you'll be basically relaxing and not putting any power or effort into the machine. Um, so out of a total minute, it's probably only half of the time you're, ex you're adding energy to the flywheel. And that means that it is going to lose some speed. But the trick is to find out the pace that you can row in without the flywheel losing too much speed. Uh, it will lose some, but it's a matter of getting accustomed to catching it before it slows down too much. And the only way to figure that one out is to try uh, to try to see what feels most comfortable. Uh, I always recommend women that they start at around a three, a two or a three, and men maybe start at around a four or a five, and then try it out from there. Because this also connects to your stroke rhythm or your your strokes per minute, how many strokes per minute that you're doing. And most people, again, they have a, a too fast of a pace, or the cadence is way too high. So they're averaging 30, 31, 32, maybe even 34, 35 strokes uh, per minute, even for longer rows, which is way too much. So another thing that you have to balance is how many strokes per minute that you're actually taking. The row forge app will show you how many stroke, uh, strokes per minute that you're that you're averaging, and you have to put that together with the damper setting so you figure out where you should be. Um, when I row a 2K all out, I will probably average 30 strokes because it's if it's a test. If I'm training, I will probably average somewhere around 24 to 26 strokes per minute, and my damper setting will be around a five or a six uh, on this. That's just what fits me. Um, it's actually only when I'm sprinting for 100 meters. Uh, a 100 meter sprint is over, over in less than 20 seconds for me. Um, so that means that it doesn't matter if I fatigue quickly. It's just a matter of getting the most energy into it. But the pace or the cadence is also tremendously high in a 100 meter sprint. I can average 60 strokes per minute. That's one per second for every minute when I do a uh, 100 meter, which means that I'll do f maybe 15, 16, 17 strokes, then I'm done. So that then it doesn't matter that the, uh, that the resistance setting is all the way up. <coughs> or, or the, 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 um, um, the drag factor here is set all the way up uh, and, and air is coming in. Um, so it's also a little bit dependent on uh, what distance that you're rowing uh, or for how long you're going to be rowing. Um, but it is important to play around with and it is important that you don't automatically just go and crank it all the way up uh, on this setting because that's wrong for pretty much anyone if you're not a skilled rower and you're not using it for, for a very specific um, purpose like that. All right, um, think of the flywheel setting here. Uh, you can't think of it as, as gears on a bike um, in that regard that the higher the gear is on a bike, uh, the harder it is to push the pedals and do one revolution. But if for e each revolution that you do, you'll also cover a greater distance. The same thing can be said for this, is that it's harder to do one stroke but each stroke will also um, will also generate more watts watts on uh, on the display here uh, because it takes more energy. The downside is, of course, that it requires you to keep accelerating if you can't go fast enough uh, with it, which means that you'll fatigue quite rapidly because your muscles will be almost fully contracted for every time you need to accelerate it. So. You have to balance that out, you have to play around with it, you have to, if you can, uh, get a coach that can uh, help you uh, through it uh, while you're on the rower and look at your rowing technique while you're rowing and then adjust things a little bit and give you some feedback. That's great if you have that option. If not, you can quite easily do this yourself as well if you just allow yourself to play around with it a little bit and see what feels the best way you can figure out what cadence, what rhythm, and oftentimes it helps to listen to the spin of the flywheel as well. All right, 
Uh, this has been another video, a RowForge video, where I talk a little bit about rowing uh, and the RowForge app, why it's important. I can only, uh, I cannot stress enough that I think you should go check out the the RowForge app if you haven't done so already. It's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Store. Uh, we just released a major update on it. It's getting really cool, uh, and it has so many features um, that's going to help you achieve your goals as well. Um, and buy a year's worth of subscription because we uh, we just lowered the price. So go check it out. I'm Dr. Kenneth J. Uh, and until next time, um, keep rowing.